Are only atheists qualified to run the country? Where do we come up with this silly idea? Out of your strange Christian persecution complex addled brain. Hi, my name is Scarlett and I'm an atheist and skeptic. And in my last video, I promised you, some might say threatened you with, some Frank Turek. And today we're doing more Frank Turek. So we have a short video today that looks to be advertising a sit down with some woman named Natasha, who I don't know at all. And we're talking the intersection of politics and religion, everybody's favorite thing. I think it's important to note that this video from Frank and this Natasha is called What to Do When Culture Hates You. Right. So there's my blibbity blab. Let's get down to the meat of the issue. So Frank asks, if only atheists are qualified to run the country. And my snarky answer would be, of course, only atheists can run the country. Like, why would you even ask that? LOL and raffle and all that. But really, my mind boggles at this question. Our Congress today is largely Christian. All our presidents have been some denomination of Christian. Atheists remain rare in politics generally here in the U.S. So I'm speechless at Frank's outraged question here. And here are just some data from Pew Research concerning Congress and the overwhelming majority of Christians who occupy that uh, establishment. But if you look across the political spectrum throughout the United States, you will find mainly Christians. And even when they're not Christian, they're theists of some kind. Again, atheists remain rare in office just generally in the U.S. But the short answer here in the U.S. of uh, can only atheists run the country is no. There is no religious test for office in the U.S., so you can be a theist of any type or an atheist. It's part of the freedom of religion that we have here. I think that it's really a silly question that Frank is asking here. Can only atheists run the country? And the only thing I can think of is this notion is born out of an impression that Christians are persecuted. Another, frankly, <laughs> get it? Frank, frankly, <laughs> a frankly silly idea. All right, let's keep going. Where are you going, Frank Turek? Idea. Yet you've got Christians berating somebody like you to try and tell you to stay in your little apologetic lane, Natasha. If okay, so here we come to the crux of the issue. If you're running for office on some apologetics platform, some people may push back against you. And if Christians are doing it, maybe you've actually overstepped what is reasonable. Maybe if people tell you you're too extreme, maybe you are. I don't know, but I can only imagine if people of a similar faith position think you're overstepping the bounds of politics, you should have a good think about what you're proposing. It is one thing to have religious and moral positions for yourself, and another to want to enshrine your personal morality into law. So maybe some of your positions should remain for your personal life and you should leave other people alone. All right, let's keep going. If you are blessed to live in a country where you have the opportunity to influence your governing structure toward making and enforcing laws that promote the common good, of course we should do that. So I have no issue with this in theory, but my problem is a lot of people think they know what's best for everyone in their personal life. So they want to outlaw things that are none of their business, that are not an issue for public safety, public health, security, and the like. They want to make it harder for LGBTQ plus people to just live their lives. They equate abortion to baby killing. They mistake their religious ideas for the common good and sometimes reject science. I don't know what this Natasha is like. I don't know if she's like this at all. I don't know anything about her. But I have seen people who do want to restrict other people's personal liberties in the name of their religious morality. I guess it comes down to this for me. If you want to be in politics, it's about a desire to serve your community or the country. And that means that you represent people who are unlike you as well as people who are like you. 
You are not just there to impose your ideas onto everyone. Those are just a couple of general thoughts. I don't want to get this bogged down into like some political video. So let's see where she goes. Do that out of our love for both God and others. Why would her <laughs> right? Your love for God and others. It's always interesting to me how often Christians talk about how much they love others. I feel like it's a bit of gaslighting that, you know, they love us and what was best for us and arrogantly think they know better what that is, even though they don't know our situation. And so they want to make us do something that is against our personal freedom out of love. You know, kind of the way you would punish a child out of love. But, you know, other adults are not your children. They're not yours to look over. And love for God, skipping the part where I think that's a false feeling, why would God want you to get involved in politics? Shouldn't you be out helping the poor in some real tangible way instead of worrying about laws? I don't know. Maybe God is calling you. I haven't heard him, but all right, let's keep going. Why would the world hate a religion that is bringing forth the Savior? <laughs> what? What? Oh, this is my favorite joke this week. First, the world doesn't hate you or Christians in general. Just what wording? Always the world, this fear mongering about the world. Like Frank Turek and other Christians aren't in the world. Uh, I know they mean the secular sphere and all that, but give me a break. It's just so silly. Like they're so above everything. And people don't necessarily hate Christians in general, you know. Again, Here's some great Christian persecution coming through your YouTube short. Second, when people get annoyed with you and push back, it is because they think you're overreaching, Frank Turek. You want more power over other people's personal lives than you have a right to. You have decided that your version of your religion is the truth, TM, and that everyone needs to follow what is your personal morality that you've taped a God over. Yeah, you're pretending like God is saying this, but it's coming out of your little brains. No one cares that you're bringing forth a savior because no one cares about that. Or, you know, no one who knows. Most of the world is Christian, so, or at least most of the U.S. is Christian, but those of us who are atheists don't believe in your savior, so we don't hate you for thinking you're bringing forth a savior. We hate you because you're using that savior to control us. And just generally, no one is thinking of your savior, not even Christians, when you're trying to roll back everybody's rights. Rights for the LGBTQ plus community, for women, for minorities, and everybody else. What they think is you're a jackass for trying to control their lives. If you are pro-life and you're advocating for laws that restrict abortion, that is called Christian nationalism. So No, no, it is not. That is not, in fact, Christian nationalism. There are all kinds of people who want to restrict abortion. I know lifelong Democrats who are also Christians who want restrictions on abortions and others who want legal, safe abortion. I know atheists who are against abortion. There are people of all kinds who are against abortion and for abortion. It's not about a single issue. And abortion is not the only issue that would make you be called a Christian nationalist. I have to say I find it disingenuous now to bring up this issue when in the United States Roe v. Wade has been overturned and abortion is now in the hands of the states. Now, I'm not turning this into a whole video about abortion again. I did that last time. We're not here to talk about abortion. She brings it up, so we're chatting about it. But what your position is on abortion does not define you as a Christian nationalist. And here is a general definition of Christian nationalism from Freedom Forum. They write, There is no clean and tidy definition of Christian nationalism since it is not a formal religious denomination or sect with a stated doctrine or beliefs. Nor is there any single person or council leading Christian nationalism that oversees followers. Generally, religious scholars, sociologists, and others who study Christian nationalism describe it as a belief that the United States is a country defined by Christianity. In practice, this means, one, the government should take steps to keep the country's Christian roots and identity intact. Two, the government should advocate Christian values and pass laws and enact policies that reflect those values. Three, the separation of church and state is not a formal law that should be followed. And four, God's plan is for the U.S. to be a successful nation based in Christian ideals. Now, you might say abortion fits in there somewhere, but it's about more than just what your stance is on abortion. 
Some of the things that I've seen that are Christian nationalism are things like atheists shouldn't hold any office at all, or other religions shouldn't hold office, or rights are only for Christians. And these are just people that are talking out in the wild here, not necessarily on YouTube, but maybe so. Definitely not so far policy positions, but those are some things that I have heard. So let's keep going. We're not going to get bogged down in this is not a whole video about Christian nationalism. After all, we're supposed to be talking about Frank and this Natasha person. Awesome. So what you end up having is all of these claims about Christian nationalism, which is really just about conservative, unpopular positions that a lot of Christians hold. You can't so we've already talked a little bit about Christian nationalism and its definition. And again, it's not about any one given position. And frankly, it's not just about the popularity of any given issue. It's about the fact that Christians want to impose their religion on a broader population, which is supposed to have freedom of religion. And by the way, popularity of something is not an indicator of whether something is right or moral or ethical or should be legal or whatever. It is an indicator in our democracy of what a representative should consider when casting their vote. But hopefully we inform our decisions with actual consideration of the facts, the science. What is the science, the data, whatever we need to make an informed decision? Just to round out this section, I do want to make it clear that there are conservatives or Republicans more broadly that are atheists and are other religions. Not every conservative is Christian. So there's, it's not a monolith, I guess is my point. And also there are Christians who are on the liberal or the Democrat side. So to create these silos and these monoliths and act, act like there's some kind of purity thing is just erroneous. But I think it's another way to muddy the waters about their particular positions and act like there's a perfect overlap. There would be more room for discussion on these issues, but they're too busy trying to create the, this is what we need to think. All right, let's move on. You can't be salt and light just sitting in your living room. You're not preserving or exposing anything by sitting in your living room. You have to get out there. You have to do things. What does that look like? How can you be doing that with confidence and courage? Why can't you be salt and light in your living room? Why can't you be salt and light by just doing what Jesus said, like helping the poor and welcoming the stranger? Why you got to be in politics? I know I'm a little salty after I watch me some Frank Turek. Now, I know that this short is a teaser for a longer discussion, and maybe it's more nuanced. But what I'm really struck by is the Christian persecution in this very short clip, the misunderstanding of what it means to be a Christian nationalist, and the lack of introspection about what people find disturbing about such a strong Christian identity being in politics. Again, Christians are welcome in politics. They're all over the place. But can you also represent a position that is not yours? Can you allow actual religious liberty to flourish under whatever leadership you have? Now, I don't know if people like Natasha are confused, thinking, I'm a Christian and I love my country. Voila, Christian nationalism. Or if they are on purpose muddying the waters, that they do understand that they want to impose Christianity or a Christian system or a Christian dominance or a superiority or whatever. You know, there's a new God's Not Dead movie that comes out soon, coming out this week, I think. And it is specifically about this. It's about somebody running for office and thinking there needs to be some spiritual awakening in this country. And it looks horrible, you know, like all of the God's Not Dead movies. But it does have a lot of overtones, I was going to say undertones, but overtones of Christian nationalism. What is really interesting to me is how much people like a Turek or a Natasha or these people that are talking about getting involved in politics want to get involved in other people's personal lives. They want to control the behavior in a personal lives thinking that they're doing God's will as opposed to what I think the politics should be about, which is how we interact with each other. It's not about me controlling what you do in your bedroom, in your consensual relationship, or who you marry, or if you want to use IVF, or if you have pornography, these other things. If it's not impacting society, why is the government getting involved? But there are some people out there, and maybe Turek falls into this particular category, who think they know what's best for everybody. Whatever they feel like God has put in their brain about how the world works and how we're all supposed to be in the world, they want to impose that on all of us. 
And it's interesting to me, the Christian persecution, the you're telling me how I need to live my life back off turns into, oh, you hate me for just being Christian and I love you. No, that's not love. That is nothing like love. You know, there are lots of people I disagree with. People do all kinds of things that I would not want to do and uh, it's none of my business, you know? They can do that. Even I can look at them, shake my head. In my head, I think, gosh, you know, you are fucking crazy. But, you know, that's my personal judgment. There are a lot of people who probably think that my life is nothing like what they want. And that's okay. We just need to come to terms with that and accept it. So there you go. Kind of a short one today. Um, I'm back in my semester. Things are a little crazy. I cannot tell you how much stuff I've been doing. Mainly stuff on the computer. But it's going to settle out and I'm going to try to get at least one video a week out. Let's hope these short videos are really helpful because it's easy to find, comment, and all of that. But you know the drill, like, comment, uh, subscribe, um, YouTube stuffing, all the Algorithmo and his consort Algorithma really love it when you do the YouTube stuffing. And if you like what I do, you can buy me a coffee or some kibble for my kitties. Uh, that link is in the description below. And thank you to everybody who has bought me a coffee is much appreciated. And I will see you soon for something. Um, I think we're gonna go back to Mike Winger. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be stupid. Bye for now.